Hey everyone, my name is Patrick, and today on my channel, we're going to be doing another episode of my series called Can My Sim Survive? The idea of this series is we're going to be taking a look at each one of The Sims 4 packs and use a specific set of criteria to help us determine whether or not these packs actually come with everything that our Sims need to live meaningful, fulfilling, simulated lives. <laughs> so the idea here is we have the same set of criteria that we're looking at as we do a build for each one of the packs. And the build that I do will only include items from the pack that we're reviewing. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Snowy Escape. And as I'm doing this build, I'll talk through kind of some of my impressions on the pack and I'll also be taking score of our specific set of criteria. So before we get into the build, let's take a look at the specific set of criteria that I use for each one of these videos. One of the most important things to me in this series is understanding if I just buy the one pack that I'm reviewing and use it with base game, how is my sim getting started? What type of life are they going to live? What items do I have? What am I missing? And what is this pack actually adding to my experience that wasn't already in base game? So it's really important to me as we look through this pack to determine whether or not there is an equal representation of items from each category of furniture and build and buy. And then later in the video, we'll also take a look at each of those categories and break down the type of furniture even further, where we look at the number of specific things that we have in the comfort section, the specific things that we have in terms of staircases and roof and wallpapers in each pack. If you like the idea of this series, if you like what you've seen so far, please feel free to hit the like button on this video. And also, if you want to see more from this series, please feel free to subscribe as well, because I'm excited to start digging into these packs. OK, so Snowy Escape. Now, this is my second video in this series, and I immediately jumped the gun to get to this pack because it's one of the ones that I really wanted to look at. I will be fully honest here at the beginning of the video. I do have a personal bias. Um, <laughs> I have been to Japan a couple times in my life. I was really excited when this expansion pack came out and I have not played with it yet. It's even it's, I think it came out in 2020 and I still have not played this pack. So just general impressions first. This is an expansion pack and with expansion packs, there's so much more opportunity for the Sims team to add additional items, be more mindful about how the items play with other packs. Uh, there's just a lot more space and time, it seems like, for them to kind of get things right and also make something that is very usable with a lot of other packs in the game. You've seen in the background, as I've been talking, uh, I started out with a traditional onsen build. In Japan, there are two primary types of bathhouses. There are onsen, which we're building today, and then there are sento. Onsen are built around natural springs uh, using geothermal heat, volcanic heat, versus sento, which are man-made. And sento are typically on the much smaller side as well, although onsen can be small. Um, and Sento are much more often inside sort of like suburban communities uh, and much more accessible than an onsen would be. So when this pack came out, I was so excited that they were exploring onsen culture. One of the last builds that I made in The Sims before my huge six year hiatus was an onsen. It's on the gallery if you want to check it out. Patrick creates. But I'm so excited to actually have items from The Sims team now to build like this fantasy onsen. I will delicately <laughs> mention that I feel like the builds that came with this game weren't completely representative of the onsen experience. I don't know that mine necessarily is either, but I did try to include other aspects of visiting an onsen in this build that I've personally experienced myself and enjoyed about visiting onsen. This pack launched to a little bit of controversy when it first came out, if y'all remember. <laughs> um, I believe this was one of the first packs where the Sims team worked with content creators to build out the entire world that we get with this pack. And the majority or maybe all of the content creators that worked on the builds that came packaged with this expansion pack didn't really have too much knowledge on Japanese culture in general and most specifically onsen culture. So there definitely was a little bit of a conversation around representation and the importance of uh, including the right people in the conversation when packs like this are made especially when we are talking about something so specific to a given culture. Most notably, what I would say is that in a lot of onsen and even in, in uh, sento as well, there is typically an area to relax and take a nap or kind of like cuddle up with a book. Um, and there is also typically an area where you can eat, whether it is something that is cooked on site um, by, by a kitchen or, you know, even if it's just something that's in a vending machine, 
usually those areas are kind of a given at an onsen because it's meant to be like a, a all-inclusive experience. Another term that I should have mentioned earlier is ryokan. But ryokan essentially just means traditional inn, and that is exactly what it sounds like. Often onsen have a ryokan or identify as a ryokan, and there are natural hot springs at the ryokan. So when I was doing this build, I wanted to do kind of a hybrid of both to both celebrate the pack, but then also acknowledge and utilize as many of the assets in the pack as I could. So along with an area to eat and an area to kind of relax and read some books, I did include two bedrooms on the second floor of this build. And there's also a semi-private bath next to the bedrooms, which I think could be a cute couple moment. Um, but it is very common to have both a public hot spring that you can visit when you go to the onsen and then also private rooms that you can rent out with your friends, your family, uh, or your significant other. I thought that that was a nice little touch to really kind of round out the full experience of the build that we are working on today. So right now I'm working on the primary bathing area. If you didn't know, in Japan, before actually sharing a bath with somebody and you bathe first, <laughs> you're typically using a shower or something like that. I really love how this layout came out because when you first walk into the locker room, there's this big wall that kind of blocks the view of the back half of the build. And then as you round the corner to go to the public showers, you just get this like incredible view and these huge windows and this big open door. Um, of the, the hot springs in the back. So I feel like it's a really cool wow moment that um, we'll, we'll check out a little bit later when we do a tour of this space, but yeah. One of the things that I love about this pack is how easy it was to use with base game. So if you've seen my first video in this series, I reviewed the werewolves pack. That was kind of tough. Uh, the color palette and the style of furniture and furnishings and build items that came with the werewolves pack were pretty tough to integrate with base game. And I had the complete opposite experience with the Snowy Escape pack. If you typically design with wood or if you do traditional builds, there's so many types of wood that are included in this pack and they're consistent from one asset to the next, which is incredible and not always a given. So um, they were really, really easy to work with. Uh, and I also loved how easy it was to find base game swatches that matched with the types of woods that are included in the Snowy Escape pack. If we look at the build as it is now, I'm using a mix of flooring from base game. So all of the wood flooring is from base game. Uh, then there's also some white and gray tiles and then some sort of, I don't know if it's made it in yet, but there will eventually be some kind of like river rock tiles that go into the bathing area. Those are all from base game. And then from this pack, we got a handful of new flooring and wallpapers. One of them is the tatami mat, which I use in a couple different places. All of the wallpapers in this build are from the Snowy Escape pack, so I was able to furnish the entire build very, very easily, honestly. I think one of the things that's incredible about this expansion pack is that there is equal representation across all categories of build and buy. So we have everything that we need from a comfort standpoint. We have beds, we have a bunch of chairs, tables. Uh, there's also different appliances. There's a refrigerator, the vending machines, of course. There are bathroom objects like a new sink, a new toilet, new showers. Um, we really have a ton of activities too. We really have everything we need in just this pack. So by far, flying colors, this pack passes um, that aspect of our criteria for today. So I feel like if you are getting started in The Sims or if you are looking for a pack that really adds a lot of usable items that help you change the look and feel of base game or update the look and feel of base game. So I feel like this expansion pack is a really great option for people who maybe only have a couple packs and are looking to completely transform what they're able to do with base game. This pack has a really unique style to it. Of course, if you're interested in how the style looks, but this pack has a really unique style to it that blends so effortlessly and easily with all of the contemporary and modern items that are in base game. So I just feel like with this one pack alone, it's very, very easy to completely transform what your builds look like. I love that this pack includes vending machines. That is something so quintessential Japanese to me. Um, vending machines are on every corner, um, not just in metropolitan areas. If you're unfamiliar with bathhouses in Japan, it may seem strange that there are just two vending machines sitting in a kitchen or that there's one vending machine outside kind of randomly. That's super common. Uh, it's, it's definitely not out of the ordinary. And it's super convenient too. I, honestly, like you can get anything in a vending machine. I know we've like barely talked about the build behind me. So let's, let's, 
talk about that a little bit. <laughs> so uh, right now we're in the entryway. One thing I wanted to do with this build that wasn't exactly functional was create an entryway that really felt like how it feels to enter an onsen. Uh, so typically when you go to an onsen or a sento, there will be uh, an entryway that has an attendant there who will you know, take whatever the fare is. Uh, and they'll also give you any clothing or towels that you'll be wearing while you're there. So, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily function that way in The Sims 4, but just from an immersion standpoint, um, I felt like that was needed here. And because this is such like a huge build, it felt like it really needed something um, equally as impressive or significant at the entrance. So yeah, we got a little desk up there with the computer. Maybe your sins can just, you know, scroll a little bit on the computer after that <laughs> nice soak in the hot spring. <laughs> and you may have just seen a cut to lower the platform that the entryway is in. This is called a Genkan. And essentially, this is just an area where people take off their shoes before entering the establishment. Um, and this is common in many different types of uh, Japanese buildings, but specifically in onsen as well. So I wanted to make sure that we had a Genkan here. And then one of my fondest memories of visiting Japan is that in so many ways you can see the human hand in how spaces are designed or built. And so as I was going through this build, I was looking for tiny little opportunities to do something similar with the items that we have in this game. So you'll see that, I don't remember what they're called, I'm sorry, but the little tiny figures that you can get from vending machines, uh, I thought would be a really nice kind of collectible item to have sitting around certain places of the onsen that made it feel you know, more lived in, but also like there's somebody that is working there and running it. Um, onsen are typically family owned for generations and generations. And so I love this idea that in this build anyway, a lot of the items that are kind of sitting around to me feel more like something that somebody has brought from home or something that they truly love and want it to showcase in a place that meant something to them and their family. And here we are in the second story of the building. I realized that I didn't have any tokenoma. Uh, so tokenoma are essentially just an alcove or, or, or some kind of very simple altar, which are in many, many traditional establishments in Japan. Sometimes there's religious significance to tokenoma. Sometimes it's just a collection of things that the homeowner or business owner finds interesting. You have two tokenoma outside of both of the uh, bedrooms on the second floor. I don't have a ton of footage of the bedrooms in this speed build. They're really simple. Um, for the most part, you may be noticing as well that I tried to keep this build really open. I wanted it to be super easy to navigate for Sims. This is a public lot. It is classified as an onsen in the game, and it also has some fun lot traits as well. So I just wanted it to be really easy to navigate. I haven't shown the bedrooms too much. We have some big hallways and stuff around that as well. The bedrooms are just really straightforward. I had everything that I needed from the snowy escape pack. I did not use any bedroom items from base game. Uh, I'm almost positive that everything in the bedroom is from snowy escape. And yeah, so that's the that's the build. So let's do a little bit of a tour. We can check it out. Here's our beautiful entryway where our attendant would be if, if that's how the game worked. <laughs> right now we are stepping into the Genkan. We're gonna take off our shoes like responsible people. We have a nice little sand garden over to the right. And then uh, a couple signs as well to instruct people on how to use the onsen. And then here we are in the locker room. So lots of storage here. We got a bunch of lockers. We got a ton of sinks. And then we're just going to take a little peek over here. This is a, a little bit of a living space, a, a relaxing space for folks after they have had a nice, a nice soak. And then on the other side of the locker room, we have uh, the eating area. And so, oh, okay, so spoiler, just a heads up, my sim self is just out here. So <laughs> he pops up a few times in the video, uh, completely out of my control. So FYI. But um, yeah, so this is a little eating area with a little kitchen where your sims can prepare food if they would like to. Um, and then we are going to round the corner and check out the primary shower area. Tons of showers here to accommodate a bunch of sims, as many want to visit as they can. We have some nice lounge chairs out on this deck. Those are from base game, but very, very common in Sento and Onsen, so I love that I was able to use them here. And then we get this really beautiful view of our outdoor hot spring. I really love how this came out. I think it's so beautiful. There will be some photos of it at night as well, where you can see the city in the background, which feels really, really cool. And then here is my sim self again. And here is our here is our indoor onsen, which I think feels really nice as well. I did put a little pool in here. Um, it is very common to have the hot spring and then pools of varying temperatures. So I put a cold pool in there. 
um, just for folks to cool off after they've had a hot dip. And then we'll just walk around outside real quick and take a look. I did include a bathroom out here just for convenience. And then like I mentioned, we didn't see this in the video, but there are ponds on either side uh, that your sim can check out after they've uh, taken a dip in the hot spring as well. And there I am in my full glory. <laughs> uh, so we'll head back into the onsen through the shower area, and then we are going to cut back through the comfy, cozy area. Here's a second entrance. We hadn't talked about it, but there's a second entrance. There's a Genkan there as well. Here's one bathroom. There are three toilets in here. And then we have our steps to more communal areas. Jeez, he is relentless. Uh, so we have a couple computers here, a nice little bookshelf, and this is the semi-private bathing area. Along with the two huge hot springs, this pack also came with really, really cool wooden baths. So I really wanted to make sure that I used them in this build because it just felt so perfect with everything else. And then we exit this semi-private bath and we go into another resting area right outside both of the bedrooms. And really quick, we'll just take a look at these bedrooms. Again, nothing too wild here, really simple. Uh, I did want to put those little oranges on the table. It's very common when you stay at a Ryokan that uh, all your meals are provided and included in the price. So I, I know we have some conflicting cultures here. I couldn't find something quite right <laughs> in terms of looking like a, a food gift, um, but you know, I felt like I felt like it was okay just because we're in The Sims. Uh, and then here is the second bedroom as well. Again, super simple, nothing too wild in here but um, I think it does the job. And with that, let's take a look at our criteria that we saw in the beginning of the video and see where this pack lands. So interestingly, this pack doesn't have any tagged styles. I tried to filter by style. I looked through all the items. There are a couple things. There's like, a, I think, a garden style and, and maybe one other that a few of the items are tagged in, but the majority of the items in this pack aren't tagged. So I would say, personally, this pack leans, of course, on the traditional side, but in a very modern and contemporary way. I think that this pack does a really good job at kind of being very versatile in the ways that you can use the furniture that's included. So if you are creating a more traditional build, it makes sense. If you want to use these pieces as accents in more modern builds, it also makes sense. And I think that's one of the things that base game does really well too, which to answer one of our other questions here, I really feel like this is super cohesive with base game um, for that exact reason. The swatches work really well together and the way that they approach designing the assets included in this pack really make for a super, super versatile experience in build and buy. In build mode, we have stairs, railings, gates, fences. We have new columns and spandrels that are fantastic. We have a good number of wallpapers that we can use in a lot of different ways. New flooring, um, tons of windows, tons of doors, really just all around a great build experience. And then in buy mode as well, there's just a fantastic amount of representation across the entire spectrum. So in terms of final thoughts, I think that this pack is a really, really good second, third, fourth pack to get if you only have base game and a couple packs. There's just so much that you can do with this. Of course, it is very stylized, but I think that the majority of that comes from build mode versus buy mode, like the wallpapers and the flooring, the spandrels, those feel distinctly Japanese to me. But otherwise, I feel like this pack can be used across the board in so many different ways with so many different packs. So for those of you who are interested in Japanese culture, for those of you who just want some really good basic items to create contemporary modern builds, um, and for those of you who want a really easy experiencing and blending with base game and maybe a couple other packs that you have, this pack, it's great. I had such a great experience creating this build. It was so much bigger than I realized <laughs> by the time I got in there to furnish it. I did not realize what I had gotten myself into, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And I hope that you like the build. If you would like to download this build and check it out for yourself, it is on the gallery. My name on the gallery is the same as it is here. So you can just search for Patrick Creates on the Sims 4 gallery and you will find this build. I think it's called Escapeway Onsen and Ryokan. So feel free to check it out. If you do, I would love to know what you think. Uh, and if you don't, I would still love to know what you think. So please leave me a comment. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you would like to see more from this series, Can My Sim Survive? Please hit that subscribe button because I'm excited to check out more packs in 
The Sims 4. I have not played this game in such a long time and I have a lot of catching up to do. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope that you feel a little bit more informed about The Sims 4 Snowy Escape or I hope that you're able to just chill out and kick back with me and, and watch me build this uh, massive onsen. Well, anyway, thank you and until next time.